Mm, no, it doesn't really work like that. The difference in strength output between pull-up and chin-up is not that huge. And the chin-up is also not a direct progression for the pull-up. Both the pull-up and chin-up utilize nearly the same muscles but with some differences in muscle recruitment. The chin-up utilizes the biceps and the pecs a bit more, while the lower traps and the brachioradialis are more active during a pull-up. It is true that most people will find chin-ups a bit easier, but not to a degree that they can do way more of them compared to pull-ups. If you want to get better at pull-ups, practice easier variations that reduce your body weight, like band assisted pull-ups, leg supported pull-ups, or pull-ups on an assisting pull-up machine. Another great progression are negative pull-ups, because you are way stronger in the eccentric than in the concentric phase. There is no problem with switching the grip to emphasize certain muscles more or less, but the grip itself is not a direct progression that makes the pull movement significantly easier. If you want to get your pull-up the fastest way, stop doing banded pull-ups. Why? Because the band supports you the most when you initiate the pull, meaning that you're not strengthening the most important part of the free pull-up. Do single leg pull-ups instead to support just as much as needed in the full range of motion. Do negative pull-ups to strengthen the eccentric phase. Yeah, she got a point. The band supports yourself more in the lower than in the upper part. But that doesn't make it a bad progression and doesn't slow down your pull-up progress. The lower part is also not the most important or most difficult aspect of the pull-up. Most people do not struggle when they initiate the pull-up, but when they try to get the chin above the bar. From my experience, people progress the most if they combine band assisted pull-ups with some of the other progressions she mentioned in the video. So for example, one workout you do band assisted pull-ups and the next you do negative pull-ups. If you're looking for a progressive workout program that includes all of those variations, make sure to check our day-by-day -day online courses on kellymove.com. Okay, here we have to talk about point 1 and 3. First of all, crossed legs during a pull-up don't really lead to asymmetries. Look, you pull with your arms and back, and not your legs. So as long as you pull with both sides equally and keep both legs in a similar position, you probably won't get any kind of asymmetries, no matter if you cross your legs or not. Way more important is that people also place their legs behind their body when crossing them. This results in an arched back and reduces the stretch of the lats and also the abdominal tension in the lowest position of the pull-up. If you place your legs in front of your body and keep the lower back neutral, the lats get more stretched in the lowest position while you engage your abdominals at the same time. This is also the reason why most people struggle to initiate the pull when doing L-hang pull-ups or chin-ups. Your lats are simply not used to working in that stretch position and therefore you're having a hard time overcoming that specific part. Okay, back to the arch back position with point 3. First of all, it's not wrong to arch your lower back and it also won't lead to lower back pain if done right. An arch back is only bad if you do it passively with no muscle tension and if the movement creates too much sharing forces for your lower spine while you're not able to stabilize it. So when you actively arch your complete body during a pull-up, you create minimal stress for your lower spine and you even protect and work your lower back because you actively engage the muscles in that area. If you arch your back or keep it in a hollow body position depends on which muscles you want to focus on the most. The straight pelvis position with legs in front is good to focus on your lats while working on the abdominals and even the pecs at the same time. The arch back position is good if you want to focus more on the posterior chain, especially on the middle and lower back. Know the difference.
Okay, this one is quite simple. As shown before, it doesn't really make a huge difference for back muscles if you use an underhand, an overhand or a neutral grip if you do them with the same body position. The biggest difference between those three is not about the back, but the arm muscles. So if you want to focus more on your lats, you can use any of these three grips while doing your pull-ups in a hollow body position. And if you want to focus more on your middle back, you can also use any of those three grips. But this time you try to arch your whole back when pulling yourself up. Of course rows have nearly the same benefit. So you can also stick to rows for the middle back and hollow body pull ups for the lats. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for a science based workout guide with no bullshit, make sure to check our online courses on kellymove.com. If you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe and activate the notifications. My name is Alex and I'll see you in the next video.